Hello everyone, today we have a 2002 Chrysler PT Cruiser with a blown heater core. I'm going to show you how to replace this heater core. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible, but I'm going to try to also give as much detail on these procedures as possible because this can get quite lengthy and messy. We have, we have our new heater core right there. Our old heater core is still currently installed. It is disconnected back there in the center of the screen. You can see where the, the tubes are that penetrate through the uh, firewall there. I have the, it bypassed with this, this uh, hose right here. I just looped the hose back on itself, zip tied it to keep it off the exhaust manifold. And that's just looped back on itself. There's the feed and supply and return lines. You'll know when you have a blown heater core when you start to smell a sweet smell um, in your passenger compartment. This is antifreeze, which is not good to have in your passenger compartment, obviously. It can also be accompanied depending on how big the leak is. You could also get uh, steam coming out of your vents or your defrost vent. When I pulled over to the side of the road, once I started getting the strong smell of antifreeze, I noticed that wa or antifreeze was coming out of my AC drain. The condensation for the AC would normally come out. I was getting antifreeze. It's down way down in there. You can barely see it in the picture there. So. It's a good indication that we have a blown heater core here, and we'll have to replace it. Before starting this procedure, you would want to have your AC system discharged, because we will be working around the AC system. After you have your AC discharged, you'll want to disconnect your battery. Disconnect the positive battery terminal. Now for inside your car, we'll be working from the top down. So first you'll take off this pillar trim on either side of the dash. And that trim just comes off with a screwdriver. You can just pry it off. There's no screws or anything. Next, you'll want to go to your center console here and pry your uh, window switches out. The whole thing comes out as a unit. There'll be a screw behind there. Go to actually go ahead and disconnect this. Okay, we went ahead and disconnected to that screw out. Next, we'll move to your climate control. These knobs just can come right off. You just pull them right off. Once you have the knobs off, you can just grab the center console here around the side and just pulls right off like that. And then you're left with this. Next, we're going to have to take out the radio. This is an aftermarket radio, but the the factory radio is pretty much the same way. There's four screws around the side. One there, one there, one there, one there. Just take out the radio and disconnect it. With the radio out, then you can take out the bottom part here with your uh, rear defrost and rear windshield wiper and your power outlet. There's just two screws, one and two. Once that's out, we're going to move back up to our climate control. Two screws holding that one in, one and two. Go ahead and take those out. And once you took those two screws out, you'll want to detach the power here. And there are going to be two cables running to your control unit here. There'll be one cable on top right here, and one cable on bottom, which is down here. They're held in by these little clips here. On the top one, you just stick a screwdriver down there, push against it, and it'll pop right out on the this one here, you'll have to stick it up from the bottom, probably against that one, and that'll pop right out. And then we can detach the two cables here. Now with those clips off the cables, we can then take the, detach the cables from the unit. By moving the cable up, there's some little, can't see in the video, there it is, a little slit where you can take the cable and put it in and out. So we're going to rotate the cable, and get this one handed, up to there, and it just pops right out like that. Same with the bottom one. 
And one last thing attached here is our vacuum hoses. We can go ahead and pull those off. Now with our center, center console pretty much taken out, we're going to take off the dash. There are two screws right here and right there. And take those two screws out and it pretty much just pops out. Now with the dash off, it exposes our remote door uh, controller. Controls the door actuators that unlock and lock your doors. There are two screws, one already here loosened up, and there's one hidden in the back right here. Take those two screws out and we'll disconnect it and that will come right out. With that out of the way, we'll move our focus to underneath the steering wheel here. There we go. This panel just pops down like that. My remote starts in there. Obviously yours won't look like this, but I'm going to take my remote start out just to get everything out of the way. Next, on the left side of the, the uh, steering wheel, we'll be taking out our thing that controls where our mirror position is. And that just pops out with the screwdriver and you disconnect it. Once that's out, we can then take out our glove compartment. To do this, you just squeeze on the sides. That falls out like that, just like on this side. You just take it out. With our glove box out, we will then take out the screw here, the screw here, a screw there, a screw in the center, a screw on the other side, there, and there. And this will loosen up this entire side. Okay, now with those screws out, we can then pull off the side here on the left side of the steering wheel where our fuse box and our uh, mirror position uh, switch was. With our panel off here, you can then work your fingers around and pull off the cover here for your speedometer and your uh, gauges and stuff. That just pulls right off. Okay, once you have the cover off your speedometer and gauges and stuff, you'll have to disconnect your turn signal lights, which are these wires right here. You can just turn them and they pop right out. And then this complete uh, face here will be free to take out. Now to take out our gauges, there's four screws. There, there's one, two, three, and for the black right there. With those screws out, your uh, gauges will just pop right out. Might take some uh, struggle to get them out of there. That. I also found that the screws for the cluster, or for the gauges, are longer than the screws we've previously been taking out. So you may want to keep these with the, the, uh, the gauge, the gauges themselves. Now that we get this down, and out. We can turn our focus to the passenger side. Again, we're going to take out these screws here, the same same uh, pattern as on the driver's side, and then this panel will just pop right off. With that panel off, you can then take out the screws around the airbag cover, which shows there, 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 and then two on top, here and here. And there are two more nuts down in here that you also have to take off in order to get the whole airbag out as a whole. And those nuts are a 13 millimeter. There's a better view of where those nuts, 13 millimeter nuts were. Once you get those two out, then the air, oh, the airbag modular comes out just by pulling out and there will be a wire attached to it on this side that you'll have to unplug. After you get the passenger side airbag out of the way, you'll want to unscrew your speakers on either side and disconnect those. There's two, one here, two screws and one there. On each one of them, go ahead and take those out and disconnect them. Okay, with the speakers out, I went ahead and took out this vent over here. There's just three screws. You don't have to, obviously. But next, we're going to take out this entire gray piece of plastic, which is one piece across the entire car. We're going to start from the passenger side. 
First, there is a 13 millimeter nut back in there. There is a screw at the bottom. There are two screws where the airbag used to be. And there are two 10 millimeter bolts where the dash used to be. We'll go ahead and take those out. Now working in the center of the car, there are two more screws right on top, right there and right there. There are two screws down where the radio used to be, right here and right here. And we're going to go ahead and take those out. And now working on the driver's side of the car, there are two 10 millimeter bolts at the top, a 13 millimeter nut back there, like on the driver's side or the passenger side. There is one more screw down the corner. You can't see right there, right there. And there are four screws where the gauges used to be. One, two, and three, and four. And we're going to take those out. Now that we got all those out, if you're not having fun, you will have fun now because we have to take the steering wheel and the steering column completely out in order to get this plastic piece. We would have to take those out anyway to get back to the um, heater core. So we're just going to go ahead and take those out now so they are out of the way. In order to remove the steering wheel, we have to rotate the steering wheel 180 degrees so it's upside down. And then next we will take off the uh, steering column covers here. There are, I think, two screws. Yep, two screws in the bottom. One there and one on the other side. And these covers will just come right off. Okay, after you get the covers off, you take your keys, stick it into the ignition, turn it to on, and nothing's going to happen because your battery's uh, unplugged. Push on the brake, shift the shifter into neutral. And that will allow us to take off the cable that runs from the shifter to the uh, cylinder here, your key cylinder, which this cable would normally prevent your keys from being taken out um, when the car is in anything but park, which it is. My keys won't come out. So next we'll take off the, the cable here. There's a little squeeze tab on the other side, and you just squeeze it, and this will just pull right out this way. Then after you get that cable out, you can take your keys back out, and next we're going to unplug all the electrical connections on both sides, and there's some underneath, to the steering wheel and the multi-switch and all that stuff. So we're going to unplug all of those. Okay, now that we got our massive wires disconnected from our multi-switch, our steering wheel, and airbag, and stuff like that, we're going to look back behind here at the joint, and we're going to mark our relationship my hand, from the joint here to the, the shaft, because we want to make sure we put it in the same position that we took it out. So I'm going to get some white paint here and mark that right all the way down to make sure that we put it in the same way we could, took it out. And then after that we will take this bolt out here. Okay now that we marked the relationship between the two shafts I went ahead and took out the pin. There was a uh, retaining pin here that was on top of this one and just pull the pin out. The uh, nut is actually part of the joint there, so the nut, if I can point to it, this nut here is the nut that that bolt went through. It's actually part of that joint, so that will stay on. Next, we will loosen four bolts holding the shaft, the steering column in. There's one here, one up there, one right there and one over there. Oh, and by the way, that nut on there is a 13 millimeter. I'm actually going to see if those are 13 millimeters as well. And yes, the bolts that go in here that hold the steering column in, those are also 13 millimeter. So 
I took out three of the four and I'm taking out the last one right now and the steering column with the steering wheel should just slide right out. Okay, once we get the steering wheel out, which we have, there will be two screws on the ends right here and one on the passenger side as well in the same place that holds electrical wires in and stuff right here. I'll have to take those out. Okay, once you get those two uh, screws out, there are two more screws hiding down underneath here. Now, in order to get to those, we're going to have to take the whole thing out. Which isn't too hard to do. There are two screws up in these two cup holders, and two screws back here, down in there, and down in there. And once those are loose, you take out your uh, back window buttons, which were there. We took them out and disconnected them. And then this thing is pretty much loose. It's just sitting there. So we'll get that out, and then we'll take those two screws out. Now with the center console loose, or yeah, the center part here loose, I was able to get a long screwdriver in there and get those two screws out without taking it completely out. So now we got those two out, this thing, this whole piece right here should be loose and we'll just feed those wires back through and make sure we're not tied up on anything and we'll get this out of here. Okay, now that we got our cover off, we can see all the workings of the inside of the dash. Next, we will take off our four bolts, these right here, one, two on the side, on the driver's side, and there's two more in the exact same position on the passenger side. We will take those off, and I believe those to be, yes, those are also 13 millimeters. Awesome. Now that we got our four bolts off on each side, there's four more bolts hiding back here. There's two on this side and two on the other. And actually the carpet is attached to the pin right there. You can take that out, no problem. Is again a 13 millimeter. But before we do that, let's disconnect all our uh, wires that are associated with the entire dash. And they make that easy because all the connections go through this right here. So we unplug this. Actually there are two of them. There's one hiding up in there too. Unplug both of those. All those wires go through the firewall. And this whole unit will be unplugged technically. And of course there's you have to unplug the brake pedal switch and the blower motor switch. Okay now that we got the bolts down here, those four bolts out, we peeled back, got our carpet out of the way, attached all the electrical, brake pedal, and the blower over there. There's two more 13 millimeter bolts here on the driver's side holding this in, so we'll have to take those two out. Okay, once we got those two bolts out from under there, we also found out that you have to, where you would hook up your code reader to read your codes from your engine, you have to detach that from the frame here. And you also have one on each, the driver's side and the passenger side, that powers the door switches and windows. We have to unplug one of the, or one on each side, in order to get this thing out. Otherwise, it's loose. Another little surprise we found is that the carpet is attached to the frame right here with the little pins that you just pop out, and also behind the uh, little panel on the side, passenger side there's a connection here that you'll have to take out in order to make the whole unit come out as one piece. And it just clips like that. Okay, now we got it completely away from the heater box here. There it is. Now we just have to unscrew a few more bolts and get that thing out. And to get that out, there's at least three bolts under the hood that we're going to take out next. All right. Under the hood now, we're going to take out the, or loosen the coolant reservoir here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt down in there. You can't see it on the video, but it's down there. It's 10 millimeters. And we're taking that out. Actually, there were two bolts holding the 
and a priest reservoir in. One at the top here, which is up here hiding, and then one at the bottom. Next, we're going to take out this 10 millimeter nut, and then we're going to detach our AC lines over here. Found a, another mounting stud down in there underneath the AC canister or accumulator. So don't forget about that one because it won't come out with that. I've tried. So. See, it's been about six hours, and we finally got the HVAC unit out. Now we just gotta go around, take all these screws around here, holding the two halves together. There's a few pins in there. Some down in there. Now we take some of these out, and then we can break it in half and get in there and get that heater core out because it was leaking pretty bad. A lot of antifreeze in there. Well, we got all the bolts out and all the clips taken out. There were 22 eight millimeter screws and two little retaining clips here. And uh, there's our heater core, which most definitely is leaking because there is antifreeze all over the inside unit and I spilled antifreeze everywhere. And uh, we're going to replace this with the one I bought earlier, yesterday. And uh, here's the AC unit. And it was chucked up full of leaves and everything else. And there's the, the drain where normally the AC water would drain out into the ground. But it's full of antifreeze too because it just came right out of there and went down there. And all about taking it out took about... About six and a half hours. Now time to clean it up and put it back in. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Easier said than done, I guess. But overall, not not too bad. Not too bad of a job.